This sort of prep is important when you're doing links. Be aware, how many do you need? Which way up are they going to face? Now this is the next thing. Links have a direction. Now they could go up this way, say on the front sprocket, or they could go up this way on the front sprocket. Generally, um, German tracks sort of, um, there's two little businesses in here, I always find they kind of point, point up, but um, I'll just need to double check that. So let's find a photo and make sure we know exactly which way up these links should go. Now if you have a look at this photo, this is a nice colourful little panther and it seems to be fully restored. And if you have a look at the links, it, um, it looks fairly obvious which way they go. Now the edges of them are sort of um, worn, so there's no, nothing there because normally there's little ridges marks on the edges of the links, but they're worn flat. So the only thing you can go by is little scoops. Now if you have a look at them, the outside ones point up. Okay, well that must be how they go then, alright? No. Let's have a look at a World War II black and white photo, this one. Now, it's more than likely the World War II photo is going to be correct. And if you're not sure, look at two or three of them. And usually that will confirm the correct way any part goes on your vehicle, if you want to be accurate. And I'd like my track links at least to be pointing the right way. I mean, it's a pretty basic sort of thing. And it's not hard to figure this out. You just find some pictures. I just went on Google. All right, so on this one, they're pointing the other way. All right, have a look at the little scoops. But the biggest telltale giveaway on these, because these track links haven't been worn flat from years of running on asphalt, is um, there's little ridges there on, on the on the bumps, on the on the bars that touch the ground, and those little ridges have got um, diagonal little sections, and those are on my links, and I can match them up perfectly. And if I do, the links are on the opposite way to the restored one. Now this happens quite a lot. Restored vehicles, people do their best but they don't put them together correctly. Um, either they haven't done the research, or they don't have Google, or they just didn't care, or, or you know, some mistake is made. And there's plenty of classic cases in history, like the Matilda, where the wrong colour was put on something, and everyone swears, that's it! Well, it isn't. Um, somebody didn't do their research, somebody got it wrong, and then everyone thinks that's the way to do it. I'll have a look at museum restorations, and they're, they're, they're kind of handy to see how things kind of should fit together, but I'll try and find a World War II photo to back it up, to be sure. And a lot of the um, Dragon kits you get left links and right links, and they're usually two different colours. So that makes it um, you know easy to know which side they should go on, because usually there's a sort of a locking pin or something that um, has to go to one side. But with these, no. These just go on either side, as long as they're pointing the right way. So I'm all set. Every link is positioned correctly, as long as I start at the bottom and wrap around to the top, and um, I'm ready to start. Now what I need is Four things to um, to get my links together. This is my easy method. I'll need some tape. Double side tape would be great, but I can just use some Tamiya tape, and I'll show you how I get that sticky side up. I'm going to need a heavy rule. It's going to it doesn't be super heavy, but you know something that's got a bit of weight in it, and something that basically pushes down nice and firmly at the edges. And this one's a little metal rule that I use. Now I've got um, some tweezers. Now tweezers are going to be your best friend here for being able to actually pick up and put down the links. You could use a wax pencil, and that is possible. But um, the tweezers give you that certainty that you've grabbed all that guide horn, you can put it where you want it to go, and then you can use your tweezers to lock them together. And then last but not least, you're going to need some slow cementing glue. Now, I wouldn't recommend Tamiya Thin. Here in Australia, it dries, it dries so fast. I mean, we use Tamiya Thin here if we want something to go and set. Because <laughs> within seconds, Tamiya Thin is almost like CA glue for us. Fupa! It's done, okay? So, um, doesn't work in my climate. Don't know about yours, but I wouldn't recommend it anyway. The Rebel Contactor is a bit slower, a bit more fluid, and it allows you to cement the links, and then they're all kind of bendy and flexible. And then you can get them in the shape that you want. Now, I've done this many times on the many um, videos I've done about track links, and I'm sure this video will be no different. You'll see shortly. Now I put the Tamiya tape down, sticky side down, then roll it over, place the rule on, and that makes it sticky side up. Easy as that. Now I've got links set out here for one side. They're groups of 10, so there's 80 and there's 6. So the best guess is 86. I've had anything from 83 to 90 recommended to me now as the number of links. But we'll go with the 86 because that's half of the links that I have, and we'll see how that... Um, how that fits once we put them on. Now, as I said, I get the, um, pick up the track links by the guide horn, see, 
nice and easy, and I've worked out which way they're going to face. Okay, so I'll start on the edge of my rule, I put my first one down. And the reason I've got this tape curled over and up that way is now I've got a surface where I can bump them and they won't fall off the table. Okay, so it should just be an easy matter of placing that one on top and clicking in. Easy as that. And doing it this way too, usually it's a good idea to check with your tracks which is the way they'll fall down. Like if they if they work better going from the left to the right, I would have started on this side, right? But these, if I if I if I'd gone that way, it would have been a bit hard because if you look, see there's the troughs, and that's the piece that's going to fall in. So if you try and go that way, well you're pushing your troughs over the top of your lips. It won't work. You need be easy if I do that, right? You need to put those lips into those troughs, which means you're going to have to start here and work that way, just as I'm doing. Does that make sense? You, you're gathering what I'm saying? Yeah, because you try and go backwards with your links, assembling them, you'll soon find it's just too hard that you, you have to try and slide them in, and that's a bit hard when you've got the sticky surface. So you need to have that figured out. I already know that. I already knew that before I started. I've, I've done quite a lot of German tracks. And uh, away we go. So. Assembly is as easy as that, and these lengths are like a piece of cake compared to like doing a Panzer II. So, I'll keep going. You notice I, I sort of ran out of sticky tape at um, link 76. So I had 10 more links. Well, that's okay. That, that has happened before with other big tanks that I've done. You don't quite get them on a foot rule, but, but that's not a big issue. You just extend your tape and slide your rule down. Your rule's only there as a template. So these ones back here, they're fine. They're not going anywhere. So they're quite happy. And that's the beauty of this method. Everything is just stuck together here. And, you know, it's, um, as long as you're not too heavy handed with it, this pretty well will hold everything in place. So there you go. Okay. And as I've gone along, I've just made sure that none of them have popped up, and these are held together fairly well. There's a few stubborn links here and there that kind of pushed against me, but generally, it's all done. And you don't need the rule now. Uh, the rule was only there as a, as a guide to try and get them straight. So I've got a nice run of 86 links. So here's the easy bit. Take your contact to glue, right, or any slow setting glue, um, and what I do is the centre is all you're going to need. So one little dab of glue on the centre link and it'll fall down inside there. And the reason I pick the centre is usually you've got wheels all cover this so if there are any glue marks they won't be seen. And anyhow invariably we'll put mud and dust and grime and stuff all over our track links so you know for all the trouble we go to they end up getting covered in crap. <laughs> you end to wonder why we bother. But they, they do look good. If you, um, if you do indie links, they really do. Even if it's only a few that are going to pop out. So, easy as this, and again, I'm banging up against that bloody iPad stand. Tell you what, doing these videos is hard. Modeling's easy. <laughs> Videoing's hard. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so, time check. For me, it's just on um, 9.30 on uh, Easter Friday morning. So, um, I'll let these set for about 15 minutes. I'll make myself a cuppa. And at quarter to ten, I'll wrap these around my tank. By ten o'clock, it'll all be done. And I could have done two sets of um, runs at once if I wanted to, um, but I decided not to do that with the video. It'll look a bit too complicated and sort of confusing. But there's nothing stopping you from, say, having your rule in the middle and doing a set of links either side, doing the two runs together, cementing the two runs together, and wrapping them on together, because it literally only takes a minute or so to put them on. Um, they won't get any, you know, uh, more glued and set in place because really these are going to take a good hour or two um, after I've wrapped them to set. All right, enough waffling. I need a cup of coffee and um, come back in 15 minutes. All right, it's 15 minutes later. It's only a couple of seconds for you, I know. That's a magic television. Now, I've shown it before. To get the tracks off, you just put tweezers underneath the tracks above the sticky and easy as that, nearly. <laughs> My extension got a little bit um, a little bit in the way, but that's okay, that came off. Alright, so that's now given me 
my whole track length, you see, and it's um, it's now going to be easy to uh, to wrap around. So we'll get all that out of the way. Now, what I found as I started to wrap these, uh, one I'd accidentally dislodged the um, end link over there that was on my extension sticky tape, so it fell off, and then some of them weren't really holding and bending the way they should. I thought, well, this is strange, it's never happened to me before. Then I had a look at my links, and my method of just putting that little dab of glue in the centre, well, that works fine for all the small tanks and uh, basically the Russian tanks I've done, that's fine, but these are great big heavy links, and there's a lot more plastic going on, there's a lot more bendiness um, there, so I've gone back and added a dab of glue either side, just, just basically inside the guide horns all the way down and I've allowed a little more time for that to get tacky and set. So here's a bit of learning and this this happens, you know, you have methods and you have ways of doing things and you and they, sometimes they go wrong and you have to go, well, what, what happened? What, what did I do wrong? Well, essentially uh, these just require a little more gluing. So now that I've got enough cement on there to really keep the thing together, let's see if we can wrap them round. So, um, I've got everything facing the right way, my links are the right way. Now the thing I've got to look at is the sprocket. That's going to be the hardest thing. And what I also need to decide is where am I going to join. And I'm going to join, say, hidden. I don't want the join to be seen up here. Not that it should matter, but I'd like to join somewhere around here. So, that means basically, if I want the join there, sort of my midpoint's going to be here. So, we'll pick the midpoint somewhere there, make sure we get the guide horns inside. The first thing we've got to do is this sprocket. Getting into this sprocket is going to be the most important part of this. Now, there we go, they, they will fit. They just require a little bit of persuasion. Now using different links that weren't in the kit could be problematic and I found it's a little bit of a squeezy job to get these on, but you can do it. So, sorry if I'm obscuring camera angles, but this required... I did a couple of test fits and it required a bit of fiddling. So there we go. They will fit. That is usually something you should check before you put on links. If you're using links that are aftermarket, check that they'll actually fit. I found with the BT-7 that um, they didn't fit that I ended up having to actually modify the um, the rear the rear sprocket. Now, that's um, that's not looking too bad. They're going to fit around. Now, have I got too much sag? Now, according to the my research, this is where it folds down to. It sits on that one, not this one or that one, but that one there is where it sits to, and then it has a natural sag from there. So, let's get it sitting in its sprocket where it should be. Okay, that one there should fall that way. That is, if I haven't gone off camera, that's basically the look that I want. So following that right along, that's sitting exactly where I want it there. And I'd say I got one link too many, wouldn't you? I'd say, oh hang on, I've lost a bit there. Well if I put that on that's just too loose. So I'm going one link less. And the beauty is, because these aren't cemented hard, is that link should. <laughs> In the theory, you should be able to rip it off. There we go. So, I should be able to join to there and get the kind of sagginess that I want. Which isn't much. There isn't much of a waviness in the wheels in this, in this particular tank. So, I've got to join those two. Now, I could use Tamiya Thin here and um, pop that in, I suppose, and then, you know, it'll be glued, but really it's not going to be too bad if I do it this way, which is just putting a little bit on the, um, the joint there, and being on the bottom, once I've pressed those together, I turn this up this way, and it's sitting on them to help them cement together, all right, so there just held together. I can't remember which one it was now. They're looking so good, I won't mess with it. And the actual weight of the plastic. Now, a trick here is, if I just put this down, and I've only got one set of track links on, 
it's going to set at a bit of a wonky angle because those wheels will fall down. So you need to prop up the other side if you want this thing to sit level. So it's just something that comes to hand that's about the same height as the thickness. Because these track links have got some height to them, see? So they've got um, probably two, nearly three millimetres height there. So that's, that's leveled that out. Um, that's sitting fine. There's not much to do. Normally I'd go through and, you know, there'd be all the waviness in the wheels, but they don't really do that with these, um, with these Panthers, so it only has to touch that wheel there. So, as long as it's in my front sprocket, which it is, there's a bit of a curve there, it has to touch that one there. So what I can do to convince it to sit there is I can find something that I can use as space. And often I put cotton buds in and things like that, but um, that's, that's quite a reasonable size space. So I'm going to have to find something. Uh, you, you just talk amongst yourselves and I'll have a quick look here. I should have been organised, shouldn't I? Alright, I found something to fit. I probably should have thought of this beforehand and I should have planned ahead, but I didn't. I didn't. Didn't know if I'd need any spaces. Now these are the pipettes I use the thing. And they'll be perfect because they're not going to put too much stress on the tracks. In fact I've got it on the wrong one. Roll it along. It should be on that one. And because I put something else in there before and it um, stressed the links actually out of shape which is not what you want. And you can see you've got fettling time here to get things just right because these links are not solidly glued in. That's the beauty of this method in that using the, um, the slower setting glue now again I should be able to put that one in there well that way probably be the way to go And that's going to give me the kind of shape I want there. So again, as with everything, modelling, improvise, invent, create. Okay, so how do my links look? So looking around, making sure that I haven't got any links that are a bit wonky. They're sitting fine. The join here is perfect. Again, because there's no stress. That's why I put the join here. There is no stress there. If I put the join up here or something like that, some people do that. But there's stress around curves. There's stress in those areas. If I put the join down the bottom, like there or there, it's a nice flat area where really there's no problems. Oh, someone's pinging me on bloody Facebook or something. When's that video going to be out?